Okay, seven o'clock. So this is the meeting of the Oyster River Cooperative School Board for January seventh. We'll come to order. Um, before we uh, have public comments, Megan Duty uh, emailed me and she has a track meet, and so she may come late, but probably will not be attending tonight. So we wish her well and obviously congratulate her on her award for uh, from Fosters as the runner of the this outstanding runner in the district. Um, and hope it's not an outdoor meet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's indoor. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, and also before we get started, a uh, couple adjustments to the um, agenda. Maria made the good catch that the adjournment should come after the non-public session. That's just, <laughs> right? That's just a, a slight error there. And they, uh, the policy committee would like us to uh, uh, consider for first read a policy on student computer and internet use, which would come as a third board action. So without objection, can we make those changes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, public comment? None? Okay. Uh, approval of minutes. Uh, so we have the, uh, both the regular and the non-public minutes for um, December 17th. So could I have a mo motion to approve the uh, regular minutes for uh, December 17th? Al? I'd like to make a motion to approve the regular minutes for 12-17. 14. Moved by Al, seconded by Kenny. Are there changes to those minutes? Um, just that I can't find that page. Um, that the adjournment happened. The adjourn okay. We did adjourn. I don't. Yeah. I can't find page. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that and that adjournment. Yeah. And I didn't know where it should go. Is in, in the, the non-public non mm -hmm. minutes. Okay, that's, uh, and that's so the time should be shifted to the public minutes. Okay. For the adjournment. Right, mm -hmm. that motion. And mm -hmm. Okay. So, so that, that all happened. So the last sentence in the non public minutes should get moved to the public minutes. Yes. And Got it. Thank you. Okay. And also, I believe the sentence before that in the non public minutes where it says motion made to return to public session. My understanding is that is all supposed, also supposed to be in the public minutes. I don't, I don't, have, I don't know how it's there, so I don't know. Like it can, my understanding is that those last two things, that the leaving non-public and the I'm returning to public can all happen when you return to public. And they did happen. In, in public. And they right. did return, they did happen, and so therefore they should go in the public. So you're shifting those two parts to the uh, public. Those segment. last three. Two, okay. just the last two. Two, the last two. The last okay. Because we, let not, we left non-public and non-public. Yep. Right. Okay. The last two. <laughs> okay. So, are you clear with that change? Yes, I am. Okay, great. So, with those changes, could oh, we? Wait, I have one more. One, I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, also, in and we're in the publics, right? Mm -hmm. um, also on page six. Find it. Um, Kenny wrote and removed to enter into non-public session. Um, it should have their four superintendents evaluation. Got so it. after the RSA 91-A colon 32A. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Other changes? Could I ask about that? Um, I'm not sure if you need that because we give the correct was the RSA, a? right, we, we give Y, and sometimes we might be going into non-public for a reason we're don't want to state publicly. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you really need to have the reason is it's more you just need to state the R, the appropriate RSA. But it seems it wouldn't hurt to have a reason. It, it wouldn't in this case, I guess, right. But I'm just mm -hmm. okay. maybe making that point of clarification. You don't okay. have to specify okay. that. So I think, I mean, it doesn't hurt to have it here, but it, I don't think it's necessary. So is the change to have it or to not have it? I'm okay with having it here. Okay, but it okay, but it's a good point it, to make. It doesn't mean we always have to have okay. it. Okay. Right. So with those changes, could we have a vote? Are there others? I don't mean to rush it. Uh, uh, um, could we have a vote to approve with those changes the uh, public minutes, the regular minutes for December 17th? All in favor, please raise your hands. Seven in favor. Minister approved. 
I have a motion to approve the non-public minutes. I think the motion would be then to approve them with those two lines taken away from that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yes. I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, 12, 17, 14 non-public minutes. I'll second. Second by Denise. Um, discussion? Maria? Since I haven't had anything better to do lately, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been reading the policies mm -hmm. and the uh, state, mm -hmm. uh, whatever regulations, about the minutes for non-public sessions. And I think that we need to beef them up a little bit. We can certainly uh, seal them if we're uncomfortable. But there needs to be more than that we went when we came. And so I will make a motion that we add um, uh, staff uh, survey and input was discussed, and that the Al Hound was asked to write a draft of the superintendent's uh, evaluation. Can you repeat that for me, Maria? Hmm. Please. <laughs> repeat it. That staff survey and input was discussed, and that Al Holland was asked by the board to write a draft of the superintendent's evaluation. Thank you. That was the motion. <laughs> I guess I'm I'm unclear about how specific non-public minutes should be. Um, so I don't, I mean, I'm, I think I would like whether we should have some, some advice about how specific they should be because I think, you know, if you, how far down this road you go, to, to, that, that I'm, personally, I'm uncomfortable mm -hmm. voting for this without, so I would wonder whether we might think about postponing. I would move, move that we postpone until the next meeting until everybody has a chance to review our policy mm -hmm. and state statute. And perhaps ask a lawyer's advice as to how specific these might be. We have a pretty specific policy. Okay. Unless the lawyer is for free, since I'm cheap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but I think mm -hmm. actions have to be mentioned, not how they turn out. Mm -hmm. And uh, when mm -hmm. we have specific uh, discussions on I thought subjects. it was votes. I thought you had to do votes had to be reported. Uh, 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 not yeah. just votes, but consensus is an action. Uh, asking you and everybody saying, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> it's an action. But as I say, I'm happy to move to uh, postpone this until we all have time. And if you want to, you're certainly free to. <laughs> I just think there's there's a, there's kind of a road like how far down you go to 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 talk to reveal what happens in a non-public. I'm not I'm, I don't know where that that line is myself, but I would like to have us think through that. And that's before. when you seal the minutes, mm -hmm. which can be done by vote. Okay. I guess my question would be: if you seal the minutes, when do you do do you do that during the the mm -hmm. actual non-public meeting? Yes. Right. But you usually seal minutes if there's something in the discussion that is, um, you know, detrimental to a person or if it's going to be detrimental to a process of um, to vendors competing in a process. I mean, sealed minutes is or student, in particular student issues. So, um, you know, s sealing minutes shouldn't just be done cavalierly. I mean, there's a reason you seal minutes. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I think that the idea that we get advice more than just reading our policy, but getting advice from counsel is an important one because we don't want to get into a situation where we overstate, but at the same time, we don't want to get into a situation where we're understating. So, so, so would you with, I'm wondering whether we could have, if you would with, did you make a motion? And it was, to postpone. To post, okay, the motion is to postpone. Uh, action, on action on the minutes until the next meeting. Uh, the, uh, okay, is that an action that? on my first? Oh, sorry. An action on my first motion. 
So then we have to make a motion to, to postpone the original approval. The whole the thing is postponed. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to say whether the motion before us is to postpone the discussion, to postpone a decision on approving the non-public minutes. So is it fair to say that's a motion for us? Um, yes. And then we'll, we'll either have some consultation, reflection, reading of the policy, and then make a decision in that next meeting. Is that mm -hmm. fair? Okay, all those in favor of that motion, please raise your hand. Opposed? No? Okay. Is there a second to raise the motion? Should we? We should oh. have a second, I think. The postpone? No. The first one. I mean, she made a motion, so. The, the first one was seconded by Sarah. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. The second one. And then Maria suggested postponing it. Mm -hmm. No. You did I, not. After I made a motion to add. Right. But. Yeah, I've okay. got Maria and Sarah, that's yeah. the motion. Okay. And, now, and rather than getting into the detail you suggested, and I don't know what you have in your notes, Laura, but I put to add more detail to non-public um, minutes. I just put the board had a discussion on how much to have in the non-public minutes, and Maria Barth moved to postpone action on the motion until there could be further input from council. Mm -hmm. Was there a second then for that? But I don't have that's a second for that. Okay. So do we have a, a second on that, the postpone? Yeah. I'll yeah. second it. Second. Okay, seconded by Al. Should we have a re-vote on it? or? Yes. yes. Okay. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Seven in favor, none opposed. The consideration of those minutes are postponed to the next meeting. Announcements and commendations, district? <clears throat> Dennis Harrington, Principal Moharamit. I'd like to take a minute to recognize somebody that none of you see, and it continues with a theme that I have in my mind of daily toil. Um, Don Martin is the head custodian at Moharamit. He came about a year ago. He's leaving at the end of this week, but he has made such a significant difference in the cleanliness of the school that I wanted to take a moment to recognize somebody who you don't see, but who is very, very important to the well-being of the school. And his Thank name was? Don Martin. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dennis. Thanks, Dan. Thank Just a question, then. Will the board, through the chair, send a card to him? Sure. Thank I'll you. Hello, Todd Allen from the high school. Um, since Tom already mentioned Megan, I also want to mention the next night, uh, Patrick O'Brien was named uh, yep. boys mm -hmm. um, cross-country runner of the, of the year. So on both sides, boys and girls, Oyster River dominated the runner of the year in, in the cross-country. So congratulations to both of them. Um, next Tuesday night uh, at 7 o'clock at the Durham Public Library is the Poetry Out Loud competition. That's uh, the, it's the school level competition. The winner there goes on to a regional competition and then eventually has the opportunity to go to the state competition. If you've never been to a Poetry Out Loud competition, it's, it's, really, it's really cool to see. Um, it's, it's, it's poetry recitations, but it's done dramatically. Very, very. Uh, um, it's, it's, it's incredible to see it. I, I, I can't do it justice standing here. It's fun. I'm, I'm not a poet, so I'm not. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to see, and I've been told they're going to have coffee and cookies, so if that's <laughs> <laughs> um, what time? Uh, 7 o'clock at the Durham Public Library. Um, and uh, Jay's not here tonight. But last, week, last time I told you about the fact that Oyster River High School was third on the niche.com rankings. And, and, and no, nobody's been talking about it, but the middle school actually was fourth on the same ranking. So Oyster River Middle School was fourth on the, out of 79 middle schools in the state. So that's pretty good. Niche.com. Niche niche Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Carrie Year. Bish from Mastway. Um, it's been great coming back into the school and seeing the kids enter and get right, on, right back on track. It amazes me all the time. Their smiles all bundled up. You can only see this much of their faces. <laughs> Thank you, parents, for bundling up your children. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually really excited at Mastway that we are, um, our enrichment uh, group, our committee, uh, has come together for another way to show our 
or continue our theme of Bobcat Kindness this year, um, where we're going to be taking part in the Great Kindness Challenge, which is taking place the last week in January. Um, our committees come together and we have a number of different surprises coming up for the students and the staff. Um, simple ways, simple acts of kindness, simple ways to say thank you and to show um, students how uh, recognizing kindness um, makes a difference in people's worlds every single day. Um, so we have some exciting things planned. We're going to start with a kickoff all school meeting, which um, we really enjoy doing, coming together as a whole school community, learning a, a song or two together, um, having some skits from some of our brave teachers and uh, <laughs> students in the in the school. And so that's what we're looking forward to from um, the, that last week, 26th to the 30th, I, as I said. Um, and we will be sure to pass along the kindness and get some photos up on our website so that you can all enjoy that. Huh. So that's the neatest, ne next great thing. The last thing I wanted to say is that tomorrow there is a PTO meeting in the North Commons at 9.30. All are welcome to attend. Thank you. Thank you. Tom, man. Sure. So evidently Dennis and Carrie are shy because Todd and Todd certainly wasn't in sharing the <laughs> number three he never is. of the high school and number four status of the middle school in the yeah. state of New Hampshire. Yeah. But it's also worth noting that Massway was in the fifth best high school in New Hampshire. Um, um, elementary. Elementary school. Thank you. Sorry, just <laughs> elevated you to high school, Carrie. Um, the fifth best elementary. And Moharamit was the sixth best elementary of the hundreds of elementary schools in the state of New Hampshire. So. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, this has been an incredible run of recognition for our school system over the past two months. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Yeah. Any more uh, reports from the district? No? Uh, board announcements and commendations? Denise? Well, in keeping with the um, cross-country successes of Megan Duty and Patrick O'Brien, I want to acknowledge Greg Gephardt for the mm -hmm. um, coaching. He's been a longtime mm -hmm. coach of the uh, cross-country team. And, um, you know, it wouldn't be, I don't think, except for some good coaching that we mm -hmm. are able to have year after year after year. You know, we always see someone and we say, wow, that's a really talented um, student. But then we get another one and another one, and, and I really think it has a lot to do with the tone um, and the coaching that you know Greg, Greg does. So just uh, kudos to him. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can see them run on a track here. <laughs> yes, happens. yes, very much so. Mm -hmm. okay. um, two things. It seems like ages ago, but there was the high school holiday concert, which was the day after our last school board meeting. Mm. And... I think if anyone went there and thought they were going to get the, in quotes, traditional holiday concert, mm. they would have not known where they entered. The performances were amazing. Um, there was a drumming that began, um, there were strings, there was chorus, and an amazing high school band, which was broken down into ensemble pieces, but then um, students showcased um, breaking into trios or bigger groups featuring vocalists. and. Um, really professional and really amazing and um, just congratulations to the um, students and to all the um, teachers that were involved in that. And, um, and the last thing, just a reminder, tomorrow there's one of our community dinners that will be in the high school. Um, I think it's um, oven chicken parm with a salad. I think it begins at 5.30 and then the movie Fed Up, which talks about uh, nutrition in schools and um, kind of along the theme of some of the other um, movies of that genre that have come out will be shown in the auditorium and I believe that's at seven o'clock. Actually I think it's five o'clock for the dinner and six thirty for the movie. fed up. Yep. Thanks Denise. Yes. Other comments, accommodations? No? Okay. Uh, district reports? Here on. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, Carolyn Eastman, Assistant Superintendent. Uh, with the beginning of the new year, I thought it would be informative to, for all of you to hear an update on the different committees that have been doing work uh, just very briefly. Um, and as a rule, the, how committees are formed is generally by a voluntary basis. So we put out that there's we're forming a committee and if anyone would like to be involved. 
on a rare occasion, we need some specific members. Um, the professional growth plan required certain members to be on board and, um, in creating the different prog professional growth plan. Um, so we have a professional growth committee um, that recently met. We have representation from each school. Uh, right now, we're in the process of developing resources to support the new professional growth plan. And we're also in the throes of creating a new survey to collect feedback on professional development needs throughout the district. So uh, that was discussed just yesterday. The math committee cont continues to meet. We have representation from each school and I believe grade level in this committee. Uh, this January, samples uh, of the three resources that are chosen by the staff are for review at each of the elementaries, and that includes fifth grade at the middle school as well. Um, February, grade level teams will meet using a quality rubric that the math committee created to guide decision making for a decision, a final decision to be made in March, on March 13th at the Professional Development Day. The Teacher Support and Evaluation Committee, this is a committee that is comprised of teachers and administrators, has been looking and exploring different models of support and evaluation. Uh, this committee meets twice per month in the hopes of piloting a, a new model um, this year. The Wellness Committee, and that Marie, I'm only speaking on this because of, oh, <laughs> and I'll, very briefly. The Wellness Committee uh, recently reviewed policies to help guide um, the policy committee on some of the um, a health opt-out and some of the other issues around um, mental health and wellness. Um, and each school gives um, meeting updates on what's happening at their building level wellness committees. So that occurred as well. The N68 Hours of Hunger Committee uh, in December sent out a letter to community members, an appeals letter, um, and we've received several donations in support of the program. Um, Kids Who Care and also grade level teams at the middle school had um, food drives where they collected I would say a thousand cans <laughs> um, that they helped then really great process was seeing the collection of, of the canned goods and then the, the students then came down to the IT office and facilities building and helped us sort and they got to see kind of the whole process. Um, so I think it's nice to see kind of the, the full cycle of, of how this helps what they're, what they're doing, helps support. Um, we also have just as, an, as a point of information, we have um, the um, Smarter Balance resources, I know we're presenting on that the next meeting, um, but in the interim, there are resources on the district website under curriculum. You can either look on the parent, under curriculum there's a area for parents under assessment, but under teachers, there's uh, quite a bit of information and resources on balanced assessment under the assessment section. Um, everything from a parent FAQ sheet to times, uh, as well as support for accommodations. I kind of created this one-stop shop for information, so, but we'll get more, in, more into that uh, at the next meeting. Um, also, we are starting our embedded uh, professional development for mathematics, uh, K-8, and that starts at Massway next week and then continues into Meharimut and then at the middle school with a clinical model of mathematics professional development where we have Professor Mahesh Sharma coming in working with different classrooms of our students with teachers observing. Um, prior to the lesson, they do a preview with Mahesh Sharma to discuss the different components he'll be introducing and working with students on. Then they'll do a debrief. There's some exploration, there's modeling, uh, there's opportunity to reflect, discuss, question. Uh, so we're really excited to kick that off uh, next week on the 13th. Uh, oh yeah. Thank you. Can sure, I, sure. Carolyn, sorry. Um, with the math committee piece, mm -hmm. when it, so the math committee is going to come up after they've looked at everything. Um, are they then going to present back to the full staff? Right now, so the math committee has developed, we had different members of the math committee looking at the alignment. Right. Now that we've moved to the quality review, the yeah. kind of that part two, yeah. all staff are involved. So right okay. now, the reason why the resources are at each building is to allow all staff to explore the different resources. They even have the printout of the quality rubrics that were created by the committee. Okay. We're in hopes that they would have some time to review the materials, use the guide as a reference, and then come together as a grade level team kind of being, having that informed discussion where they've had some yeah. time to, everyone's had some time to look at the materials. So. Okay, and then what about the community piece of it? 
Are parents going to get brought into this? I mean, it's a dangerous thing at times, but, you know, brought into this discussion, um, invited to look at, I, I don't I don't mean so much invited to look at materials, but mm -hmm. um, <coughs> clearly parents have opinions about math curriculums too. Math mm -hmm. is a very uh, hot topic. Hot topic. Um, mm -hmm. And I think... It's, it's important to somehow bring them in as well, and I was wondering if there were any plans to do that. Um, right now, we're in the kind of throes of us exploring the materials yeah. and really making sure the resources are aligned, making sure they provide their kid-friendly, their teacher-friendly. Um, they have um, manipulatives and hands-on exploration that's meaningful and makes sense and goes deeply into the content. Um, once we make a decision, this process, because we wanted to make this process a very relevant, um, meaningful process with a lot of data collected along the way, yeah. once the decision is made by the entire K-5 staff of yeah. a resource that we'll, we'll choose, then we'll go to town and make sure that everyone knows in the community how that resource was chosen, why it was chosen, what it provides, how it enriches the mathematics program. Okay. Um, and that, I think, was something that we've had several conversations at the committee level that as we explore the resources that we wanted to be confident in the decision we make to be able to explain the why, the why in the decision. So that's why we have the, the process. Okay. Thanks, sir. Other questions? Superintendent's report. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Very briefly, we have begun the public conversation about the proposed 2015-16 budget. We started in Lee on uh, Monday night, and I have to say that Sue and I, and Todd actually, know more about the Lee Library than <laughs> probably any district administrator should. Mm -hmm. uh, he would listen to it for about an hour and 40 minutes. It was very informative and mm -hmm. it was interesting. And then we got to present the budget and I think by that time we presented the budget, the selectmen were very gracious and ready to move on to the next item <laughs> after an hour and 40 minute public uh, uh, bond hearing. So um, they had good questions. In particular, they had questions of Todd about the um, um, rearrangement of the athletic fields and the all-weather track that weren't um, defensive at all. They were just curious as, a, as to, you know, uh, certain aspects of it. Uh, Monday is the town of Durham, for those of you who live in Durham. And then Wednesday is the official public hearing on the 15-16 budget. And then Madbury follows <coughs> up um, towards the end of the month. I think it's the 19th, so 19th in Madbury. So um, we're in the process of laying out the groundwork support for our proposed budget. Okay. What time is the public hearing? S seven o'clock, I believe. Let me just, it's on our public agenda. Public to know. It is at seven o'clock in Durham. The public bond and budget meeting, does that start at seven as well, sir? Yeah, yeah, but does it start at 7? Yes. Yep. And that, that also is a good point. When we do the public hearing on the budget, it actually will start with a separate public hearing on the bond related to the athletic fields. So at 7 o'clock, it will be the bond public hearing. Um, Tom will open it. He'll ask Todd and I to do our presentation. Then we open it up to questions of the public. When Tom sees that the questions are exhausted, he'll close the meeting. Then he'll reopen a public meeting specifically on the proposed 2015-16 budget. He'll ask us to do our presentation. When he sees those, those in the audience have exhausted their questions, he'll bring that meeting to a close. So that's the process we'll be using next Wednesday. So it'll be just informational, right? Correct. Okay. Questions for Jim? I'll Come next Monday night to the. Oh, thank you, Kenny. So appreciate I'll, it. I'll be there. I'll be there. Business administrator, Matthew. Okay, all set. Megan is not here tonight, uh, so if you move down to uh, discussion items, assignment of warrant articles. Um, I had an idea about how they might work, so I th thought I'd put put that out there. If that's all right. Um, I think I would like to do the final warrant of the budget. And I thought since um, uh, Ed was involved in the paraprofessionals, would you be willing to present that? Yes. And Denise, you're 
part of the uh, bus driver's warrant. Mm -hmm. Would you yes. be willing to sure. present that? Yep, that's fine. Okay. Yep. Um, um, which one's that one? Kenny has asked, you had an interest in, in the uh, track war warrant. Is that, would that be all right? That'd be fine. Yep. Um, and now you express interest in the, uh, the budget stabilization. Sure. Uh, which leaves, I think, the presentation of the, um, the, uh, the award for the um, volunteer. So I don't know whether Maria or Sarah, do you have a preference? Either one of you would like to? Uh, Sarah? Either way. Okay, okay. Sarah? Yeah. So would that, would that work? Is that a? But, so I get it. <clears throat> Maybe go from the top. Why don't you okay. take it from the beginning? Okay. So uh, I don't think we have to introduce Articles 1 and 2, right? That's the moderator and the uh, school, two right. school board members, right? Yeah. We don't, we don't yeah. really get involved in that. Okay, three, Article 3 would be Kenny. Article 4. That'll be me. Would be Denise. Article 5 would be Ed, right? Article 6 would be Al. And Article 7 would be me. Is that agreeable? Yes. Uh, oh. Just a question. Sure. Uh, I thought we changed it last time on the explanation of Article 6. But uh, on the next to the last line, okay. we didn't have surplus current year and surplus. Because I don't think money is ever surplus. It's the award. But we had uh, the changed it to... Uh, which one? Uh, explanation of Article 6, the next to the last line. Yeah. The funds to support this would come from the current years and surplus. And yeah. I okay. thought we changed that to unappropriated money or something. Okay, just to just be sure, we're done with the assignment of the Warren Articles, yes. right? Okay, so we're getting into, I think there are, if there are some changes in any of the language because this will be our last chance to, to do anything, right. so. Um, but I thought we did change it last time. Okay. We voted on it. Okay, so. Um, See if that was in the minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Maria, I'm sorry. Could you. So the explanation on the Article 6, mm -hmm. last, next to last line, the funds to support this would come from the current years and unappropriated funds, not surplus. The surplus is also, that's also in the warrant itself, surplus. Yeah, I just have that we had taken that, that end, because I have my rough draft, and we took out that and not impact the tax rate Part, but right. I don't have that we changed the word surplus. Year end, yeah. uh, it's in the warrant article. Year end undesignated fund balance. Surplus. Surplus, dog. It, it, surplus is in there. That's redundant up there. You're suggesting that it should just say undesignated fund balance. Right. And, and this, name the school board as agents. Right. And the same thing in the explanation. The current year. Undesignated fund balance. Yeah, it, I because don't, to say surplus means that we have money to throw away. Sue, that doesn't substantively change that warrant that article, right? That doesn't substantively no. change it. Because it's but, accurate. It is the undesignated fund balance. So if that is the board's will, that's an easy one to, to change. So are you going to take it out of the warrant? Mm, we can say and, the, and the explanation, right? Yeah. And add it to the explanation. Well, Undesignated fund balance in both of them. Right. Yeah. Make them the same. And cross off the word surplus. Yeah, that's the, what right. Maria is suggesting. Okay. Would you want to make that as a motion? Okay. I move. Okay. So the motion is to um, change the Article 6 so it just reads undesignated fund balance and, and eliminate surplus. Mm -hmm. Right. And to um, also, in the explanation, uh, these funds, to, these funds to support this would come from the current year, year undesignated fund balance, right? Right. Okay. Correct. That's the changes. 
Um, I think that sounds reasonable to me. So, Do we have a second? Is there a second? Kenny? Se second, seconded by Kenny. Is there discussion on that? All in favor, please raise your hands. Seven in favor. Okay, we support those changes. Uh, um, so you had, there was a, a change that I, a change that I requested in Article 3. Would you want to say what that would be? Or? Sure. Um, we have <coughs> noted that it's to be paid over a 10-year period. Mm -hmm. And then we also have to authorize the school board to issue and negotiate such bonds and notes to determine the term and rate of interest. So since you've already specified the 10-year, it's redundant to say to determine the term and rate of interest. Mm -hmm. so, okay, so, so to we, cut that. We would so strike that. Strike which words? Let me just make sure it's okay. clear, because that was also a recommendation. Can you do the rate, though? We don't know the or Do we know the rate? Well, you know the term. I, talked with, I talked with the Department of Revenue, and we have an estimate. And I asked that question, because the estimate is based on what I knew at the time it might change. And she said, just as long as you recognize that if it's less, you're going to pay less. And if it's more, you're going to have to find that money. And it won't be a huge amount. So if the rate's different, it's not, it's not an issue with them. So we cross out, after starting, we have the word notes. Starting no. with the word end, cross out. Starting with determine the term. To and determine the and, yeah, So the end, end to rate. determine the term. Right. And, and go to the semicolon. Right. Okay. So yeah. it ends in bonds or notes, period? Yes. And so we get rid of and to. Well, it doesn't, there's no period there because it's a semicolon. It's right. A semicolon. It's a semicolon. It's a semicolon. Okay. So you strike, yeah. strike and to determine the term and rate of interest thereon. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. And then just go right to the semicolon. Okay. Could we have a motion to. And I, I thought that, that certainly what struck me was the. If we set the term in the in the warrant, then to say we're and we're going to determine the right. term, that's you know kind of contradictory. So, mm -hmm. so I think this I think the fewer items we have in right. it, the cleaner it is. That was a good catch. Yeah. Okay. So could I have a motion to strike that section of the warrant, Kenny? Um, I move that in Article Three, we strike um, from the warrant, following the word note bonds or notes, um, we strike a clause and to determine the term and rate of interest thereon and then keep the semicolon and go okay. on from there. So do you, are we all clear on that change? Mm -hmm. Okay, moved by Kenny, seconded by Denise. Mm -hmm. Is there discussion on that? All in favor, please raise your hands. Seven in favor, none opposed. Uh, that change is uh, approved. Uh, so are there any other, ch this is our last chance to look at this. If there are any other questions, changes, um, I, 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 I wanted to just clarify for myself once again about the default, and I see that's the, another item. Is this okay to bring up the default now? It comes up, on, I think, on the agenda on its that's own. That's the next item okay. on the agenda. Next, can you hold that? Sure. Just, we hold that. Okay. I had a question about, and this may be just really picky, but you, you, you refer to this as an eight-lane track. It's really eight lanes and straightaways and six, you know, is that, you know, an issue or um, Todd, what do you think? I personally don't see it as too big an issue. Yeah, okay. Well, Tom, what's the issue with it? Like, well, the, it, it's not an eight lane track all the way around. Okay. okay. It's an eight lane track in the straightaway, so for the sprints, you're going to have it, you can have eight. But, it's, but if you're running a 440 in, in lanes, you can only run six, right? Um, so, yeah. You stay in a lane in your 440? You don't, do you? No, they do. Do they? All the way around? So oh, I see. You to dagger the star, of course. I'm sorry. Yeah, I missed right. Okay, so you can only run six in a 440. You don't okay. in 800. You wave and okay. start it. <coughs> <laughs> so are we good with that? We're leaving it? We're striking it. Last chance, Tom. Could will include an all-weather track. A multi-lane track. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. I guess you could say an all. You just leave out the word eight lane and just say this project will include an all-weather track. And of course, there's explanations that will, you know, at the mm. budget hearing and so on and so forth. That's what I would approve. I, I just think it's not quite accurate. You know, I okay. think okay. if somebody yeah. said, okay. yeah. so I think just to say. All right. Uh, uh, 
an all-weather track. Mm -hmm. And okay. then some, because I mean, some people could come back and say, you know, it's not really an eight-lane track. Yeah. 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 All right. I'm, I mean, I that, can I just that's the that? last thing I'm going to talk about. <laughs> this war. I mean, I promise I'll back. I will not say another word about this. <laughs> But if, if that, I'm, yeah, and I, so I get that, and we'll that sounds good, like but I think it's and such a value that rather than just say an all-weather track, and because eight lanes, you can use them for sprints, it's going to be able to be used for longer races, mm -hmm. an all-weather competitive track mm -hmm. or competition track, is that? Oh, I think that's multi-lane. How about that? No. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I think that if anyone really, to me, they would, you know, they would do their homework. And I mean, there's information that's available to really get into the details. There'll be time mm -hmm. to ask questions at the public hearing. Mm -hmm. I would Is this a standard truck on high mm -hmm. Yes. So why don't we just say that? So it's a standard high school competitive Well, there's, track. Different, there's different kinds of tracks because you'd have some tracks that have eight lanes all the way around. I don't mean to... I think if we just says an all-weather track, we'd do it. Then I'm with Tom. Mm -hmm. Keep okay. it simple. All is that a motion? Track. Is that a motion? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Is that? No, I can make that a motion. Okay. I make a motion that we uh, strike eight lane out of the explanation, so that it reads: This project will include a or no and um. all-weather track. Okay. Second. Ooh, second by Maria. Is that all right with people? <laughs> okay, all in favor, raise your hands. Okay. I think Sarah and Maria just had a lot of fun at your expense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Are there any other changes to the language? No? Okay. Um, so, if we move on to the... Um, Motion to approve uh, East River High School overnight field trip. No, we missed default. Oh, default. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Default. Default budget. Yeah. Sue, so you want to go through the default budget sure. procedure? You all have a copy of the form, mm -hmm. standard mm -hmm. form. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you read the explanation on the front, which do you want me to read that? It's I read it. Was yeah. it under reports? I missed that. Um, basically, what we do is we take the prior year's budget and reduce or add anything in this year's budget. And when we add, it's because by contract we need to add it or for some other reason, special ed, something we need to add and come up with our default. So as a result, um, you'll see some pluses and minuses. Um, Biggest minus is in the interest that goes down, so we would make that adjustment. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the pluses are due to salary and contracts, benefits that we have. And the difference, oh, I had that written somewhere else, somewhere around 600000 And it's not your entire budget that's the default. It's just the default is compared to only the operating budget. So when you compare the numbers, you're comparing the two, fund 10 and the default. So that difference is about 600000 which would be... Your addition in technology, your addition in facilities, and the additional positions you added, which are about 200 each. So that's where the difference is between the default and the proposed. Make sense? Yeah. Can you just give me an example, to try to get my brain wrapped around this, of a one-time expenditure that would cause this to be, that you reduced from here? If you decided to, well, for instance, in facilities, you put a new boiler in. Okay. Yeah. You, addition, any additions or any improvements okay. you make, those are kind of one-time things. Okay. They're not ongoing. And they can vary in size. Tiny yeah. To get. Okay. Okay. And, and so uh, the question that I had had is that, the default budget, that 38858 really replaces what is written in Fund 10, which is the 39454. Right. Right. Um, and so I, I, I wonder if, again, it, and I think maybe we had a discussion last year, mm -hmm. if it's worthwhile pointing out that Funds 21 and 22 stay the same. 
because it, it, people might be confused because you, they might add everything up and mm -hmm. you can come to a much larger number. That's exactly what happened in Lee on Monday night. The selectmen went to the aggregate budget of all the funds and said, so if the default budget were the budget, you'd go down $2 million. And I responded to, to ex the, the same way Sue just did tonight, that it would go down about $600,000. So it's easy for people to make that mistake, if you will. So I think it's really important that we're clear in all of our public hearings what, what the default budget number is and how we get there. And does it make sense to add just a sentence explanation that the, that the default budget only replaces what's listed as Fund 10, while Fund 21 and Fund 22 will remain the same regardless? Um, I'm just thinking of a voter not paying attention. The voting booth, they see 600000 that's a lot of money, but it's nowhere near as big as $2 million plus, and maybe they're more willing to vote against a $2 million difference as opposed to a $600,000. I, I think that that's perfectly acceptable if we want to add that line in. Maybe we can make it as a note. Please know that the default budget affects only the operating budget. And, it is a, and then we could put the accurate number in. Sue's so doing an approximation tonight, which represents, you know, five hundred and eighty-seven thousand dollars less than the current budget. Okay. Something and, along and, those lines. And making that link fund ten operating budget. Yep. So is. The, I'm sorry. So are, are we are you proposing that we add an explanation to to Warren Article Seven? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Denise. I, I guess I'm not in favor of that. And the reason is that I want to, you know, look historically. Um, I don't think I want to mess too much with things. And I feel like th it's not the first year that we've had, you know, this um, for, you know, this format and that this is this is this this is how it always is every year. And, you know, yes, if you have maybe someone who's new, you know, new to the district or, or new to how this works, um, but in general, I think people understand that. And, and to me, I, I would be a little bit afraid that someone would say, oh, well, that's only 600000 We can cut that much. You know, I mean, I almost, I almost think it could come back to bite us if we did that. Honestly, that's, maybe I'm wrong about that. But I, I guess in my sense is that this, people should be used to this is how it is and, and just keeping it as is. In the explanation, were you going to come in, go in, to expect numbers there, or just say that, just like <clears throat> let you know that the default fund budget reflects fund ten, right? That's, period, and that don't you uh, don't have to do the math for people. That's what I thought. Right, it's just to do that. If I could, i um, just make a motion that um, I I wouldn't, of course, want to change the article seven. But um, with respect to you, and I appreciate your comment, mm -hmm. Denise, I would just like to add that one word sentence. Um, as, and I think the way Jim said it, to, to note that the default budget only replaces um, Fund 10, the operating budget. Or impacts Fund 10. Can, can I ask a question? Like, does, this, does this explanation go to ballot? Yes, yes, all of the explanations are there for mm -hmm. on the ballot. They're on the ballot. <clears throat> okay. Excuse me, and that's like at the end of Article Seven that you want to add it. It would be an explanation, just like we have in Articles okay. Three and Six. Okay, I think we need wording yeah. for. The, I need exact wording. I think for Jim. Okay. okay. Very good wording. Okay. Did you? Did you? I didn't write it down. Somewhere. I did. I wrote the okay. default budget. I wrote explanation. The default budget <laughs> only impacts Fund Ten, the operating budget. Is that, I mean, is that clear? Impacts? Does that affects or impacts? It's replaces. Replaces, yeah. Replaces. Right. Instead of impacts, you want to put replaces. I'm just want to reread it, Sue. The default budget only replaces Fund 10, the operating budget. I'm just not quite sure that that's going to clarify a huge amount. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
I think if somebody isn't familiar with that and then read that one sentence with that, they know, they know. I know you read this now. huge big word on it. I think, I mean, my line too is like, Jim is going, aren't all the town meetings televised? Right. No, no just no. Um, no. Lee just is Durham. not. Durham is the yeah. one that we get to you know, speak to multiple communities. But so that time. one's publicized, and then the deliberative session is mm. attended. So I, th I have to agree. I think Denise is right. I think that there's enough information. We'll just make there. sure we make that clear in our public presentations. And I just, I just really feel like if you put that in there, it's going to take the focus on. It's going to put the focus onto a default budget. And I think people will be more likely to say, oh, well, I, I'll go for the default, but, you know, I don't know. That's, mm -hmm. I think if you put it out there, that's what people will do. Instead of focusing on, oh, yeah, I want to approve the warrant here and, and what's in here, you know, everything that's in Article 7. So, Kenny, you, did you make a motion? Was that seconded? I think, I think there, there was a second. second. There's no yeah. second? Okay. Hearing no second, then we don't go forward with your motion. Okay. Uh, so I think we need a motion to approve the default budget. Is that correct? Yes, but you won't officially sign it till your next meeting. So if you want to make a motion to approve it, that's fine. Okay. You would do the, need would, to sign that. Would there be any changes in it between now and the next meeting, or? Shouldn't be, but just because you shouldn't do any of those signings until after your public hearing. That's what we've typically done. Okay. Sign the form, but you can make a motion to approve what we present. Okay, but. But if, there, if there's any possibility of a change, we should, why don't we just wait? Is that? If there won't be any, but. Okay. It's, it's up to you. Whatever makes you comfortable. Tom, Whatever I makes guess. you comfortable. Um, well, if there's a possibility of a change, I would say wait. But if there's, if there's no possibility of a change, I would say, and you say. And the only reason I say that is because I did at my first meeting miss something and someone brought it to my attention. I'm like, you're absolutely right. I need to change that. Mm -hmm. So I did change the default. But that doesn't mean that at your next meeting you can't change your <coughs> approval. Okay. Let's, uh, then let's, then I'm comfortable acting on it. Then we can also reconsider, reconsider, right. reconsider if there's some change. Uh, possibility of a change. Okay, I'm comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so good. I really appreciate you, <laughs> all your concern about my comfort. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny? I move to put forward a default budget of $38,858,410. Moved by Kenny, second by Al. Further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hands. Seven in favor, and then opposed. The uh, default budget is approved. So when do we sign it? At the next, next meeting. meeting. Which is? 21st. Um, so May public. I just ask a sure, question? Sure. Uh, Vaguely remember a problem last year of us doing something at the following meeting after the public hearing. We tried to amend the warrants right. and we were reminded that once the public hearing is done, we can't amend the warrants. Right. And does that hold true for the default budget as well? So should that be signed at the public hearing, after the public hearing? Mm -hmm. We're still in session, so not at the 21st, but on the 14th. I'm just asking the chair. <laughs> <laughs> it's entirely up to you. Uh, typically, but, uh, we've done it at that meeting. You actually sign your warrant at that meeting, too. At the meeting? On the 21st, on after the 21st, your public hearing. After the public hearing. Okay. Well, so I would assume we would do that again, then. Right. That's, the, that's on the agenda. We've I'd just like to learn from my mistakes. Well, <laughs> I think we all. I think we did. We were all we did. surprised. <laughs> by, uh, no, let's see. I think we were well educated last year. So uh, maybe the signing should be on the 14th, is what I'm saying. But the 14th is a public hearing, it's not a board meeting. Right. And so we have to constitute a, a board meeting on the 14th in addition to the two public hearings. Because you can't take action outside of your normal. I thought the public hearing is part of a meeting. Basically, your the public's opportunity to give you input on what right. you're presenting. I understand. That. Right. So, and my take has always been: then you go back as a board at your board meeting and 
digest that and think, you know, at some but point someone can, might make last suggestions. Year. <laughs> but right. we're told we shouldn't. <laughs> and say, yes, this is what we're going forward with. And we'll sign off. But you see no problem doing that on the 21st. Right. Okay. Which is typically what we've always done. I will. <laughs> I'm pretty sure what, that part of it wasn't in question. It was the part that we started to tinker with the language right. of the warrants after Based the fact. Based on the input at the public hearing. Absolutely. So right. why do we go to a public hearing, get the input, and say, well, too bad. Sorry. We're interested in what you have to say. But, you know. Well, you can, so, you can revise your budget based on a public hearing. When? <laughs> at your next board meeting. Mm. It can because be done at the that deliberative. Because will be a change to the warrant. Not, not the intent of the warrant. It would just be the number. So your deliberative session might change your numbers, too, because the community votes yeah. for that. Right, but that will take place right at the right. deliberative session. But the, but the issue last year, uh, Maria, was a, some, we were attempting to change the language, language of the warrant which was changing substantively the intent of the warrant and that's where we got into trouble money changes my mind all the time <laughs> <laughs> so it's not that we couldn't make new mistakes but that particular mistake <laughs> is not the one <laughs> 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 Shh, don't say that okay um good Public hearing? Or is there anything more on the default then? We're going to. No, we're going to the default. Okay. So we will sign. Did we vote on that? I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. You did. Mm -hmm. 7 0. Okay. Um, public hearing? I, I don't know what this entails. I mean, is there some question about. I think you already said you wanted to just inform the board that there were two public hearings, so we'd, you'd open one. Right. Okay. It. Okay. okay. I think so he already right. covered, right? I yes. don't think there was anything exactly else. Exactly what I wanted to do. So we move down to. Um, You've already assigned the Warren articles. Assigned the Warren articles. Um, motion to approve the Oyster High School overnight field trip. Um, do you want to go back to get a motion to approve the presentation of the Oyster? Yeah. You had the discussion about yeah. who would do it. Yeah. And then the question I have in relation mm -hmm. to that. Um, mm -hmm. is we also had a discussion at the administrative team uh, level on the Distinguished Service Award, mm -hmm. and we'll present that name at the next meeting. But that also is presented at deliberative session. Mm -hmm. So um, is, that, is that normally presented by the chair? Is that normally presented by a member of, of the board? Uh, because... You could assign it to Maria since she doesn't have a role that night. It's, it's these six Warren articles are out there. If you want to make sure everybody had a productive. No, that was just, I was I going to do the volunteer thing. There's only five Warren articles that need to be presented. Okay, so, so we're all set. And I'm fine. And I I only have one memory of a volunteer presentation. It was not done by the chair. But I don't no. know if okay. we I want to so have that it when you said volunteer, you meant that was this distinguished, distinguished service. Service. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, Sarah. Okay. I, okay. I misunderstood that too. I'm happy to have Maria do it. No. 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 no, no, no. <laughs> I have a thumb wrestle for it. Um, so um, we probably should have a motion. Could you read? So the, so we have a motion. Um, but I can't make a motion. So could you, okay. Yeah. Um, I move that for the deliberative session that Article 3 is presented by myself, Article 4 by Denise, Article 5 by Ed, Article 6 by Al, Article 7 by Tom, and Sarah will present the, is it the Distinguished Service Award? Mm -hmm. Yes. Moved by Kenny, seconded by Al. All in favor, please and raise your hand. I, I want to amend that, mm. to read that Maria Barth doesn't all those in favor, please raise your hand. Seven in the affirmative. I accepted that friendly <laughs> amendment. <laughs> okay. Um, Thank you. Okay, a motion to approve the Oyster River High School overnight field trip with the Jazz All State Festival. Denise? I motion to approve the overnight field trip, um, high, sc uh, high school overnight field trip from February 5th to February 7th to the Jazz All State Festival. Mm -hmm. Moved by Denise, seconded by Al. Discussion? 
All those in favor, please raise your hand. Seven in the affirmative. The field trip is approved. Then we have an additional um, first read for a policy which is in your folder, uh, student computer internet use. I don't this know. was brought to Let's us see. by uh, administration just to update to today's reality of uh, computers. Of hacking. Yeah. Of hacking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Is this a first read? It's for yes. first read, yes. Yeah. yes. So could I have and a it's just the blue lines that are being added. Mm -hmm. And there is an R that goes with it that does spell out what the policies and rules are, kind of the, mm -hmm. it, that are kind of alluded to or mentioned in that second paragraph. Okay. We don't approve okay. ours at the table. Okay. So could we have a motion to approve this po policy J-I-C-L for first read? Al? I'd like to make a motion to approve policy J-I-C-L, student computer and internet use for first read. Moved by Al, seconded by Denise. Further discussion on this? No? Uh, all those in favor of, please, of approving this for first read, please raise your hands. Seven in the affirmative. Uh, policies approved for first read. Okay. Um, can I ask, sorry, can I ask that when we get it for the next meeting for second read that we can have that R sure. in our backup stuff too? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So just as a, a point of information, Sarah, what typically happens is if I include the R, the board gets confused about which one it's, uh, it's approving. Okay. So no problem in putting it there. I just That's Excellent. one of the reasons why we don't put it up front. Okay. Because we, in the first year we were working together, stumbled and bumbled through that, and we keep on okay. getting confused, but not a problem. In fact, okay. I can just send it to, oh. to you I can directly. look it up. I can look it up, too. I forgot about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just... <clears throat> That's beyond the discussion, but just look, reading this, it doesn't talk about your phone, which is the way most people look at their computers these days. Or I, so I just wanted to know if that's something in the R or if that should be something added to the language here, because really most people are getting, you know, use their phones for their internet access and not there or have that's that true. as another major, and it's not put in here, spelled out that way. I'll look at the R and see if it covers the phones. Okay. Um, but remember, the policy is global, <laughs> and that's the R's that get into the details. Okay. Um, school board committee updates. Bria? Uh, policy committee met today and had a very interesting and long discussion about uh, searches of students. Mm -hmm. And this policy will come to you next time for first read. But it's such a <coughs> hot button issue mm -hmm. that the regulations, particularly, will have to go to some kind of public uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. And we should certainly plan on taking more than just a few minutes to discuss this, uh, this policy. Thank you. Other committee updates? Um, I just want to echo what Kenny already talked about, the community dinner um, tomorrow and the movie Fed Up, and also that the Sustainability Committee will have a full committee meeting next Monday, January 12th at 7 o'clock, and that anybody from the community is invited to attend. Thank you. Okay, uh, public comment? I just wanted to remind that oh, I'm uh, Dean Rubine from uh, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Same shirt. <laughs> it's actually a different shirt. I have right, a commercial advertisement. Four dollars at Rite Aid. <laughs> uh, uh, school board elections are coming up, and uh, the uh, filing date for candidates is the 21st of uh, this month, January which is, I guess, the next school board meeting. And uh, open uh, that's the opening for the filing. And you 
can file until January 30th. And, well, I guess I know who's running and not running, but I want to encourage if anybody from Madbury wants to run, they can uh, track Tom down and direct them how to do that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. David Taylor from Durham. Um, I, there was another document that you guys discussed, the policy on computer use that wasn't in the packets online. It wasn't over there, so it was very hard for us to follow along. Um, it's really important that every document you guys talk about is available to the public so we can uh, discern what you're talking about. Um, there was also some discussion about motions to go into non-public meetings as well as the minutes of non-public meetings. Um, my understanding is that the motion to enter the non-public meeting according to the policy states both it must include the matters to be discussed as well as the statutory exemptions. So both of those have to be in. Um, as far as the minutes for the non-public meeting, the detail and generally, not the legal requirements for public and non-public meetings are the same, same levels of details. And the two legal requirements is that all actions, regardless of how they're taken, must be in there, whether it's a consensus or a thumbs up or a vote or whatever. Um, that was a particular sticking point with the board a few years ago. Uh, and also, all subjects discussed must be listed. Um, I'm also particularly concerned about any delegations as an action, because that uh, was also something that was abused significantly in the past. Thank you. Uh, sorry, one other last note. Um, as far as the, the changes to the, um, the budget after the hearing, uh, once it's posted, you can't change it, except after the hearing, you can reduce numbers. You can't add to the budget, but you can take things away. Thank you, David. Okay, future meetings. Any, any other public comment? Uh, future meetings, our regular meeting on the 21st and the 11th, and we have town budget meetings coming up. Um, 14th, the public bond and budget hearing, and the meeting in the Madbury on the 19th. So, uh, so uh, do I have a motion to go into non-public session um, for the discussion of the superintendent's evaluation? Okay. Um, I move to go into non-public session for the business of discussing the superintendent's evaluation under New Hampshire state law RSA 91-capital A3 Roman numeral 2. I, and I, I think it's really C, because we're not talking about dismissal, promotion, or compensation. But C doesn't totally fit either, because we're not saying it's going to adversely affect the reputation. So I'm... Um, I think it's A. It's A. It's okay. compensation. Okay, compensation. So we'll keep it as A as last time. Okay. okay. Moved by Kenny. Second. Is there a second? Seconded by Denise, and I believe we have to have a roll call mm -hmm. to go into non-public. So. Denise Day, aye. Sarah Farwell, aye. Kenny Rotner, yes. Al Holland, aye. Tom Newkirk, aye. At Charlie, aye. Maria Bart, yes. Okay. Go into non-public. Oh.